Hello, you are watching Bourbon Forage Fishing and have we got a great side-by-side. -side. I finally got my hands on one of these gosh darn Cellar Age by Maker's Mark. And I'll be darned, I'll tell you what, disclaimer, I hate Maker's Mark, all of it. I can't stand it. But this bad mamma jamma, whoo! It is a blend of a 13% 11-year-old whiskey and a 87% uh, 12-year whiskey. So it's, it's what, 11 to 3 quarter years old? 87.85% alcohol this bad boy is. And it is not super complex, not super oaky, as the name suggests, cellar aged. They age these things, I think, in a regular warehouse in a barrel, and then they pop it into a, a cellar where it's cooler, obviously. And so the aging is uh, more happening with the grain as opposed to the, the cycling of the, uh, of the wood and the distillant. It, it's more of the distillant aging. You know, it's kind of like scotch. You see scotches often have long age statements, 12 years, 16 years. It's because they're in cooler temperatures, cooler climates, uh, more temperate areas. And the exchange between the wood and distillant it takes longer because it's not heating up. Whereas, you know, a product like this, this is Buffalo Trace, straight from the barrel, it's probably between seven to nine years old, something like that. So once I tasted this thing, it is very candy sweet, very candy for desserty, delicious, caramelly goodness. And I thought, wow, that's very much in the same ballpark uh, as a blend, straight from the barrel. It reminds me very much of it in that, I mean, not as flavor profile, but in that there's not a lot of complexity, there's not a lot of oakiness, there's not a lot of this. It's just a really delicious, desserty candy experience all the way through. And I thought, hey, let's try these together and see what happens, because I think this is a very interesting side-by-side. -side. So my Blanton Straight from the Barrel is 64.1% alcohol, dumped on 2019, so it's an Oli. Uh, Warehouse H, of course, on Rick 37, barrel 245. We're gonna put that up against the maker's mark. Now this does have, the Blanton's does have five or 6% alcohol, probably about 5% alcohol advantage, uh, which isn't fair. Um, however, this maker's mark is gonna have an age advantage, which probably is more important than the proof uh, advantage, because it's, uh, the seller age is basically, you know, 11 years, 10 months old or something like that. So this is an oldie. It's a damn near 12 year old bourbon. The Maker's Mark. And also, the Maker's Mark is a weeder. You know, it be, actually might be an interesting side-by-side -side to do a Weller 12 against this Maker's Mark, but I don't think it would be really close enough. I think the Maker's Mark would smoke the Weller 12. Maybe I'll crack open my 107. I do have a Weller. So I do have a Weller 107, and maybe I'll do another side-by-side -side with the Maker's Mark Seller H that, you know, they're both weeders. I think these are generally probably around seven, eight years old, generally. So that might be an interesting side-by-side -side we might do in the future also. But anyways, back to the straight from the barrel and the and the, and the cellar aged. Let's nose these. Let's let's taste these. Let's let's figure out what this is all about. This is one of those really cool, interesting side by sides I just live for. I just love this kind of stuff. Oh Jesus! So the Maker's Mark cellar aged smells like candy, <laughs> caramel candy. Oh, it's very rich though. I love that. There's a richness here. Okay, that's that's absolutely delicious. So there's a lot of buttery richness and it's a creamed candy. So it's a butter and candy kind of vibe. So caramel and butter. That smells really incredible. That, that age, that aged so nicely. Uh, really great product by, by Maker's Mark. To the Blanton straight from the barrel. Definitely a little bit more oaky influence. I'm getting a little bit of a skunkiness comparably, right? Not as much richness. Yeah, a little bit of skunkiness, oakiness. A lot of candy though. So this is more like a hard caramel candy, like a crunchy hard, and this is like a fat, like toffee can, like a soft candy, like like if you took soft caramel and melted it in with butter or something, you know, this this smells a lot, lot better on the nose, a lot better. Uh, it's just because of that butteriness and that creaminess. I'm definitely picking up a little bit of some fruitiness too, like grape. Yeah, but that creamed element of the celery is just, just fantastic, Jesus. Okay, so Blanton's is opening up a little bit. Oh, that smells really nice. I'm getting a little bit of the cherry cola now. Okay, it's not getting totally blown away by the creaminess of the Maker's Mark now. That's, that smells really nice. 
Cherry cola, cherry coke, smells really good. Okay, it's sweetened up on my, on my nose. That's really nice. Huh, that's interesting. Now there's a little bit of a slight mint popping on the celery age, and that's undoubtedly because I'm smelling it next to the blends. I'm nosing it next to the blends. They're gonna kind of change each other's profiles. Okay, now the Blanton's is smelling better and better now. Oh, that's really nice. It was just wonderful, like bright candy, sour cherry popping up. I mean, cherry, sour cherry, uh, sour cola, some caramelliness. Really beautiful standard bourbon notes, uh, but it's bright and, and sugary and delicious smelling. I'm gonna start with the Maker's Mark. Actually, I, you know what? I think I'm gonna start with the Blanton's because the Maker's Mark is so much older and creamier. Incredibly pleasant, not super complex. There is a bit of an alcohol burn and some tannins there um, in the mid. That Blanton's is really delicious. Almost, for me right now, my palate is just drinking like a cherry Coke um, with some obviously some caramel influence. It's a lot of candy, a lot of caramel candy, a lot of uh, sour cherry, very, and, and some light f uh, oak influence. It's not, Blanton's is not a complex bourbon as you probably know. Straight from the barrel is not also, is also not a complex. It's just, it's got more of the candy sweetness and more of that deliciousness. Um, there's just more of it. Um, mm, a lot of cherry cola on the after. Very nice. That's very pleasant. It drinks uh, maybe slightly hot, um, but uh, very enjoyable. Man, that Maker's Mark smells so good next to the blends. How nice is that Cellarage? The Cellarage, I can tell you right now, I, I, is better than the Blanton's. Damn. It definitely has more age. I wish that Blanton's was older. I'd like to see a Blanton's 12 year uh, barrel proof, you know, but um, wow. So it's just, uh, you know, almost like Tootsie Roll level sweetness popping in your mouth. A beautiful mouthfeel and it just coats and just fills your mouth and coats it in an oily quality. There's butteriness and creaminess that you only get with very, very good, uh, you know, great even well-aged bourbons. Um, God, it's just candy and butter. <laughs> it's so good. Um, wow. Maker's Mark, I can say, I don't have to really do it anymore side by side. It's 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 quite a bit better than a Blanton Straight from the Barrel. Blanton Straight from the Barrel, of course, is really good still. Let's try it next to the Maker's Mark and just kind of see how they go back and forth and see if I change my mind on anything. But It's still very delicious. It's very light and bright compared to the Maker's Mark. Uh, you can tell it just doesn't have the age. Ooh, a little tingly on the tongue. Mmm, mmm. It, it's just very much, much lighter caramel candy um, deliciousness. Very good. I remember in the past picking up kind of like coffee notes. So there is kind of a coffee kind of bitterness to this one, this particular barrel. Um, it's very good. I wish this had another three or four years on it. I think if this had three or four more years on it, it might be better than the Maker's Mark, but that age, man, and, and the way they've aged this Maker's Mark Cellar Age, I mean, tip of the hat to them. And this is in the solid A type range. I, I, I think this is better by a fair amount than the Blanton straight from the barrel. I would put this, I think this would compete probably, I don't know if it will beat a Taylor Barrel from the Proof, but I think it will compete with a Taylor from the Barrel, of Taylor Barrel Proof. And it might even, compete with some uh, some some like weaker stag batches, I think it would. Um, of course, it's a much different kind of profile. There's not the complexity. There's not the, you know, um, what would we say, uh, dynamic ups and downs in terms of, of tannins and, and things going off in your mouth. It's, it's very simple, but it's just, it's just damn delicious stuff. <laughs> So you don't drink you don't drink these cellar aged for for the complexity and the ride. You just you just drink it to to, to savor the beautiful buttery candy. So uh, I hope this helped you in your journey. I hope that you guys can get a hold of this. Obviously, this is a horror bottle. And quite frankly, these are generally horror bottles too. They're pretty darn good. So uh, I hope you like this episode of Bird Before It's Fishing. Please like and subscribe. Consider being a membership to the channel. I'd appreciate that. We're gonna get a Patreon set up for you guys in the future. Thank you very much, and take care of yourselves.